All right, check this out. We have an ordinary looking cicada. Yes, you might be thinking to yourself, I've seen one of these before. Well, have you seen one of these? This is an empress cicada, the largest cicada in the entire world. This really hits at home when you look at it from above. Normal cicada right here, giant cicada, the largest one there is. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Enormous versions of relatively normal insects. If you look over here to the right, there's a nice list of insects that you might see in your day-to-day -day life. Today we're gonna pull out those insects and pull out the largest versions of them that exist anywhere. These aren't genetic mutations, they're just species that are significantly larger than the ordinary versions. Just exactly like this right here. Annual cicada, empress cicada. If you see one of these flying around, um, that probably means you're in Southeast Asia because that's where they're from. But I wanna look real quick at the annual cicada because there's some interesting things that we can check out if we look very closely. So, if you, let me ask you this. <laughs> Let me do a little bit of a, a quick cicada test for you. Um, is this one of those cicadas that come out every year, or is it a cicada that comes out every 13 or 17 years? It's very easy to tell the difference, and um, people don't really know the difference. They mix them up a lot. This is an annual cicada, like I've explained a lot. It's the ones that come out nearly every summer if you live in the Midwest or parts of the United States. Very easy to tell because if you look at the head and thorax, you see how it's kind of brownish green? Um, when they're alive and not old and preserved like this one, they look much more more green like this, almost like camo colored. That's how you can tell if it's an annual one. The periodical ones, which is what they call the ones that come out every 13 to 17 years, have black faces and red eyes. So if you see one of these guys, oh, there you go. If you see one of these guys, it's a relatively ordinary gear. If you see the ones with black faces and red eyes, that's um, a special year. That's kind of unusual. And if you see one of these guys, um, I hope you have a great vacation because you're in Southeast Asia. Terrific. So this is just a beefed up insect, but it's not the heaviest insect in the entire world. It's not even really close to the heaviest insect in the entire world. That one we're gonna bring out next. I'm gonna cover this up and see if you can guess. So imagine imagine what it might look like. You wonder if it's like a stick insect or a, what else? Like um, a tarantula, those are big, but they're not insects. And if you knew that, congratulations, we can be buddies. Um, but what do you think the largest insect in the entire world might be by weight? We're gonna bring out the normal version right now. Ah, let me know if you got this right. Okay, ready? Here we go. Were you guessing a grasshopper or a cricket or something like that? This, my friends, is a Carolina grasshopper. It's relatively ordinary, and it pales in comparison to the beefiest boy that we have today. Not the scariest in terms of, I don't know, danger, because that's what's coming up later, but the beefiest, juiciest truck of an insect that we have in the video so far, and probably for the rest of the video, is this. The giant Wheatta, my friends. It is a juicy, big boy, beefed up cricket from Australia? Let me look at this real quick. Pardon me. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Where is this from? Giant Wheatta. Oh, New Zealand. These are, these are in New Zealand, apparently hopping all around. But yeah, absolutely enormous. And let's look at it from above so you can see it a little bit better. It's just kind of like a ballooned out version of a regular cricket which is kind of neat. Other interesting things about this, kind of like the cicada, which I was talking about, when you have a giant version of an ordinary thing, you can get a really easy glimpse at some interesting traits about them. Let's look at the front leg of this guy. Oh, wait, you can see it perfectly right there. I'll oh, get in focus. Look at that front leg. Do you see that little oval? Yeah, you can see it pretty easily from this angle. Where are we? Are we right here? Oh, no, it's the back one. Okay, see that oval right there? That is the cricket's eardrum which I always thought was really fascinating. Crickets listen or can hear by um, using eardrums on their knees, which is very unusual. Okay, so we have two beefed up insects, but one of the most interesting things about insects isn't that they're just kind of creepy and crawly. It's the fact that they are, there are some species which are like versions of insects that are not just beefed up versions, but they take a particular trait or characteristic and like juice it up, like just hit the gas and keep going. No other animal or type of animal does this. Think about this. Imagine like a primate, right? We are primates, we are mammals, whatever. Like an orangutan or something like that, that had arms that were like 20 feet long or legs that were like 15 feet long. It would be insane, right? That never happens, but it does in insects. 
This is what I'm talking about. Oh, shoot. I got to put stuff back. I wasn't paying attention. Sorry. Grasshopper going back. Next, we have the next one. Okay. Go to the side. Perfect. This, my friends, is a longhorn beetle. Longhorn beetles are pretty ordinary looking beetles. They're called longhorn beetles because they have enormously long antenna that are um, at least half of the length of their body, if not even more. This ones are a little bit longer, but it pales in comparison. Pales in comparison, my friends, to the Wallace's longhorn beetle. Hit up with that overhead, perfect, because we're gonna need it. I think we gotta go wide with this. Normal, normal longhorn beetle, Wallace's longhorn beetle. That, listen, that's a true longhorn beetle, my friends. This guy ain't nothing compared to this juicy man right here with his super huge antennae. But I told you that we had two longhorn beetles, two versions of longhorn beetles to look at. This one has enormously long antennae. Next one has super long legs, which is, I think is, if anything, more unusual because it's just the front one. Normal looking insect right here. This is a harlequin beetle. One, two, three, four normal length legs. The front ones are absolutely freaking massive. You might be thinking to yourself, why? That's very unusual. It is unusual. And the thing... <laughs> The answering the question why is never really easy when it comes to biology. You tend to think of uh, towards evolution, like why would these long legs help this bug survive even longer? And um, the thought is that they use the legs in combat with other males, like when they're fighting, they'll just like fight other males with their long legs, and the longer legs they have, the more likely they are to win those fights. And there's a sexual selection component too, so for whatever the reason, Female longhorn beetles are particularly attracted to males with long legs. I don't know. They might be a sign that they could survive really easily or can find a lot of food because they have the energy to grow them or they can evade predators. Well, I don't know. For whatever reason, when a female longhorn beetle sees one of these bad boys with the giant legs, they're like, ooh, my God, irresistible. Mating ensues and you get more of them. That's pretty much it. Next up, we have my favorite segment of these videos, the surprise animal of the video. Hooray! So if you want to sub uh, participate in this segment, this is a segment where we bring out a random animal from the entire collection that doesn't have to do with the subject matter because um, I have every animal that exists on planet Earth, every single one. So if you'd like to participate and see something interesting, here's how you do it. All you have to do is type a comment below in this specific format. First, you have to list the departments. So far, right now, we have three departments to work with, mammals, birds, or insects. Then you list three numbers in between 1 and 20. Here's an example. Insects, 4, 2, 17. Mammals, 1, 9, 2. Eight, something like that. So what we're doing is the first department is, is where we're going to look and what group of animals. The second and third and, oh, wait, oh my gosh, I'm getting, oh, God, this is, I, I meant this to be easy and it's not being that, e it's not that easy. Okay, listen. So the first is the department. That's what we list. The next three numbers are the cabinet, the tray, and then the number of specimen in that tray. Today we are looking at mammals. Cabinet, four. Tray, three. Animal, seven. And that, my friends, is, where is this? Is this close up? We have a spotted skunk. <laughs> a spotted skunk. Oh, my gosh. We love spotted skunks, said the viewers, and this became their favorite segment ever. Spotted skunks are very interesting. Um, I thought this was kind of fascinating because I live, um, I live in the Midwest, and our skunks look very different than this. This particular one is from Florida. I think they're in the south and uh, the southeast of the United States. Um, it looks like the back that there's a lot of different stripes on it, but apparently, or no, a lot of spots, but when I researched the description online, apparently there are only four which is interesting because they're kind of so, they're marbled around and the pattern is so unusual. So I figure I kind of want to take a close look and see if we can identify the four things. But this was my question. It says there are four stripes on the back of this skunk, but what are the stripes? Look at this skunk. It's kind of tricky. Are the black parts the stripes or are the white parts the stripes? Is this a black skunk with white stripes or is it a white skunk with black stripes? If you look at it, I think it's a black skunk 
with white stripes, it's kind of like that thing where the box can go in and out of the page. You know, it flips back and forth. But assuming it's a black skunk with white stripes, look on the side. I see this is one stripe here. This is one stripe here. That I guess hooks around, yeah. And then it has one and then one on this side. But then there's like this and this. And then there's this. I don't see the four stripes. Do you see the four stripes? I'm not sure. Let me know if you see the four stripes. This is a preserved mammal specimen. This is kind of how they do it. This is the skin. They tend to remove all the bones inside and just preserve them like this. I always thought they looked kind of silly. They look like they're like diving through the air, right? I don't know if that's okay that I do that or not or pup them around. Hopefully you're fine with that. But anyways, guys, Spotted Skunk is the surprise animal of the week. If you'd like to participate, hop down into the comment section, make sure you subscribe too, and just list a comment in that particular format we talked about, the department, mammals, insects, or birds, and three numbers in between one and 20. Like I said, I have every animal that exists on planet Earth, every single one, so who knows what you might find. Okay, back to the largest insects. Now, oh. Now we got the spicy ones coming up because this is these are the dangerous ones, the the exciting ones, the ones that, um, oh my gosh, there's a little bit of thrill involved because who knows you might get stung. Ooh, ooh, sp spicy, stinging. Okay, <laughs> um, the first one we're gonna pull out is a honeybee. First, we need our reference specimen right here. This is a Western honeybee, very normal looking honeybee. Oh shit, is that the wasp? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're doing wasps later. Just ignore that, okay? Please. This is a honeybee. There. <laughs> Much better. Easier to look at. This is a western honeybee. These are the bees that make honey. This is um, another preserved specimen. If you've been wondering what exactly we're looking at, this is how they preserved insect specimens in a lot of natural history collections, like the collection that I have. You have a pin right here that's pierced through the, the thorax of the insect, and then you have a couple different pieces of paper that have collection information on it. It's very important that they have different sort of information like where it was collected, um, what time of year, um, then the, the name, the, the Latin name, the common name, any information that you have that you can attach to the specimen could potentially be valuable for scientific reasons. So that's what all of those little pieces of paper are, if you remembered, or if you were wondering. If you were wondering none of that, and you're like, be quiet, Charlie, just show me that big giant bee, then uh, here it is. Congratulations, your impatience is paying off. This is a carpenter bee. It's a special carpenter bee. I think we got to do it from above because that's the real only way we can look at this. This is a tropical carpenter bee, largest bee in the entire world. These behemoths are absolutely massive. And if you're wondering, can those bad boys sting? Yes. Even regular carpenter bees can sting, which is kind of an unusual fact that I was not aware of. Oh my gosh, this looks so great if they're together. Look, it's like big brother, little brother. Look, even though they're both females. Oh well. Okay, let's go back from above. Is that the closest we can go? Ah, shoot. So if you can see a really interesting difference between carpenter bees and regular bees is how they gather honey. So honeybees have these little... Um, things on the back legs called pollen baskets. It's a bunch of like on their hind legs, I think it's the furthest set of legs back, they have a bunch of hairs, tightly woven hairs that they can pack pollen into. And it's you, very difficult to see. You can't really notice it because this bee is so small, but that's what the bees have, the regular honeybees have. The carpenter bees are a little bit different. Check out these carpenter bees. Is that as close as we can get? Oh, yeah, but I think if you look very close, oh, this is perfect. You can see it right here. Look on the front legs of this carpenter bee, and you'll notice they're very hairy. Like right here, that one, and then this one over here. All of the legs on carpenter bees are really hairy. They just jam pollen into those, all of their legs, and carry them around. Honeybees are a little bit more tightly organized on their bat back legs. They have those pollen baskets. Carpenter bees are a little bit just like, just, they like wear it like pants everywhere. Carpenter bees versus honeybees. Okay. Enough with the, enough, enough with the, the baby insects. Who cares about bees? Who cares about longhorn beetles? We came here for the juice. 
We came here for the drama. We came here for the scary insects that we're going to dream about tonight and potentially have nightmares. That's dramatic and that's exciting. Well, my friends, you have waited long enough. We are 15 minutes into this video, and you finally have a chance to see the largest wasps in the entire world. But first, we have our reference, a yellow jacket. Everybody's favorite, uh, uh, least favorite insect. These pack a punch, they sting pretty hard, and they have five eyes. Did you know that? Five eyes. If you're thinking to yourself, Charlie, your bananas. I only see two eyes on that wasp. Well, on the giant one, we'll see the five eyes. But first, gosh. Okay, all insect specimens are very delicate, and these are um, these are no exception. These are some of the the largest, most del intricately delicate specimens that I have. So it, it might be a little bit difficult to get to take these out, but just bear with me. Okay. Oh shoot. We're gonna go wide a little. We're gonna tilt this to the side. We're gonna scoot it over. We're gonna put our wasp. I'm gonna place it on this guy and scoot it in. Ever so. Oh my God. Oh my God. If you have ever heard of a tarantula hawk. That's what they decided to call this insect. They were like, you know what? It's so big, we can't call it a wasp. We got to call it a tarantula hawk. Jesus Christ. Okay. Damn. Can we tilt this up a little? Look at that. Oh, my God. There it is. Wow. Look at it in all of its glory. Largest wasp in the entire world. I have some unfortunate news to all of my locals listening. These are in the United States, particularly in the Grand Canyon and elsewhere as well. But if you've ever been vacationing in the Grand Canyon, um, you might have seen one of these guys. And unfortunately, yes, they do sting. If anyone's a fan of, I don't know, Brave Wilderness or something like that, you might have seen the episode where he got stung by a tarantula hawk. They're described, look at this girth. Um, they're described as having the second most painful bite or no sting of any insect in the entire world. And I looked up some, I have some great descriptions from re researchers. Holy hell. Okay, we have slightly damaged specimen right here. We lost a wing and we lost one of the legs, but that's what it's like spread out. Jesus Christ. Okay, here's the description. Ready? <clears throat> Let's go. Um, all right. The, the, the sting of a tarantula hawk moth has been described by scientific researchers, so you know they're being accurate, as immediate, excruciating, unrelenting pain that simply shuts down one's ability to do anything except scream. Mental discipline simply does not work in these situations. That's intense. That's a good one. <laughs> Largest insects of all time. 